Hey guys, and welcome to a brand new Train Sim World free video, where today we are going to be driving from Gravesend to Dartford in the lovely Class 465, or as some people have been saying, the F1 car, I think, features gaming, mentor or something like that. So yeah, let's set up the train, let's make sure AWS is on so we can have that beeping noise to annoy us. Uh, tail lights off, headlights on. There we go, and we are all set up. So, we are going to be calling at Norfleet Swan, Swanscombe Grin... If <laughs> Stone Crossing, and finally Dartford in 16 minutes time. It's just a short little shuttle bit on the new extension of South East and High Speed. Obviously, there's the extension down to Ashford from Ebbsfleet, which we'll do in another time, but yeah. It's time for us to wait until 10.05, but we're going to depart just a tinty bit early so then we can mess up and still be on time for the next stop. Anyway, okay. So, doors are closing. And away we go. I set the speed set so we could be nice and lazy. All I can do now is just sit back and relax. So it's set me to 15 miles per hour. But it does just sound like this, which is not really the best. It's just it's just going whoop 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 <laughs> constantly. I check the horn works. <laughs> My turn trains to world free up a little bit too loud for that, but Certified good horn. Okay. Come on. There we go. Now we go 20. Ooh. Dangerous speed limits we're going. See, so I've noticed a lot of criticism from Train to Mod 3, mainly because of the screen on there. Which you'd think they would get it correct, as Dovetail Games Depot, like, not Depot, uh, office is right next to this line. So, I'm pretty certain it's meant to be, like, more blocky, the text is or something like that. So, people are not happy of that, I've noticed. But, Trains and World 3. Let's just try and describe it compared to Trains and World 2. Uh, they have umbrellas, which look cool. <laughs> the umbrellas just pop out. And it's umbrellas. They have dynamic weather now, which is also kind of cool. Um, what else have they got? Um... More lag, which is not cool. <laughs> um, somehow, they've made the requirements now. Now, if I quickly load it up on Steam and go onto the store page, the requirements are now wanting uh, a 3070 as the recommended one. If I just get this up quickly, a 3070, just so you know. Uh, that is quite an expensive graphics card, or a 5600X Ryzen 5. Which is also very expensive. So, it seems Train to World 3 is starting to get towards um, the god PC you need to actually run the game. Which is a bit annoying and sad, I guess. I don't think DTG do any optimization at all. They do a little bit here and there. It could be worse. So, another thing that's different for technology people uh, between Trains and World 2 and Trains and World 3 is it's on Unreal Engine 5. That's why the lighting looks different. <laughs> that's one of their big sale points, I'll be honest with you. Um, they've done it again last time where they did um, Unreal Engine 3 to Unreal, Unreal Engine 4 when they went from Trains and World 2020 to Trains and World 2. So... It would seem that's 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 uh, the only difference I can tell. Uh, there's uh, there's lightning as well. On the intro, it shows lightning, which is proper cool. Wait, this is this isn't Unreal Engine Five. I thought it was Unreal Engine Five. Well, I've been we've been scammed. I'll be honest with you. We get some scam emojis out and chat. <laughs> uh, 
little bit further. Let's run it. I thought he got upgraded to Unreal Engine 5. That's why I was like actually intrigued in this a little bit more. The horn, I think. See, there's a different sound engine now. So all the sounds just just a little bit different. Not that much. Why is everyone leaving? Am I, am I really that bad at driving? Why are you all guys drive walking in a line? I thought it was meant to be like dynamic walking paths. They're just doing the conga. It's just an extreme version of the conga. Oh, he broke up from the conga. Okay, we might be a little bit late. Nice. We've driven 46.5 miles in this train. So, for people who are wondering, hey, I own Trains and Wild 2. What's happening to all my DLCs? Well, Dovetail Games have actually done something nice for once for people who own the DLCs. Essentially, all of the DLCs are now shared between multiple games as far as I know of. So, for example, I owned Brighton Mainline, or London Commuter, sorry, as it was called, in Train to Mod 2. I now own that in Train to Mod 3 as well, which I guess is an okay thing. It saves me spending another 30 quid, or probably 100 quid on all the DLCs again. Um, and... What it also has done is, because I got the deluxe edition of Train to World 3, it meant I paid £45 on the game to get it early, as well as to get the Steam route, because I didn't I didn't get the Steam route on Train to World 2. So that means I did get the Steam route on Train to World 2 as well, from Train to World 3. So there's probably some form of method you could get here. Um, also, everyone's just stuck now. They're just not, they're not getting further than the door at the moment. So, uh, we, <laughs> there might be an issue. <laughs> I'm also, oh, there we go. My camera was stuck then for it. Oh, it's just, okay. So, at least, I'll be honest with you. At least the people aren't flying. Because they were doing, the Train to Mod 2, if you remember when we went on the underground, Every time passengers got out the train, they got sent to space. So, they've improved at least one thing so far. I'm trying to, I'm trying to be positive, I'll be honest with you. I'm trying my hardest to be really positive about this. You gotta think about the positives. <laughs> oh, okay. But I can say, I am playing on medium graphics, I'm pretty certain, because this game's quite intense. Uh, graphics set medium, yes. So I'm on medium, and it does look alright, to be honest with you. I've seen a video on someone playing on Ultra, and damn, that looks nice. It's a shame it hasn't gone dynamically rain yet. I really don't know why a train game is that intense. You gotta always try and think of the positives of everything. It's it's a hard, very hard challenge, but you know you just you just gotta believe. Have you ever driven in the snow? I haven't yet. Uh, it's for Blue Water, so I'm guessing Blue Water is a shopping centre, isn't it? If I recall correctly, unless oh, that's a bit. That was a tree inside of the um, tunnel that was there, or a bush. Um, I don't think anyone's noticed that. I should be a beta tester, honestly. The amount of bugs I find in games is insane.
I don't think they quality check their games properly either, to be honest. Oh, that was a perfect stop, that was. Get <laughs> Passengers get stuck in the platform. Well, to be honest, they, they're, they're having issues leaving my train at the moment. They, I think they just want to be with my train longer. Oh, see, that's the wrong way. Why can't I grab the door? There we go. Another thing, actually, I'm trying to think of positives now for Train to World 3. They've upgraded the Bakerloo timetable, so it's now an actual. Um, it was. It's now an actual underground timetable where it's like trains every two minutes instead of a 40-minute gap in service. But that timetable's also gonna go to Train to World 2, so it isn't a Train to World 3 exclusive when you think about it. Um, what else? Oh, the tunnels in Southeast and High Speed. They don't go randomly bright in the middle of the tunnels. They, they're dark throughout the whole tunnel. Um, you now get the 465 if you didn't own that before. Because that comes into screw. Although we do lose a lot of timetables from the southeastern high speed route because of the random terminators have been removed. Because they're not run by southeast and they're run by Templink. So I guess that's a negative. I need to actually see how many timetables you actually lose, because I'm pretty certain there's quite a lot of random services. But I guess it makes it more realistic, and that's what you want in a simulator. You want it to be a realistic simulation. It does, and I'm on medium graphics, and it looks okay. See, I'm stopping at the marker so I get 500 points. Oh, I got 499 that time. Oh, 40 miles of track extra. I forgot about that because the extensions. You also get a really, really long German route, which is really fun to drive. Mainly because you can just sit back and relax it does it for you. Because you press, you set the train up onto automatic systems and then BAM! It just drives for you. Cassel to, ca Cassel to Thingy. Yeah, the German route was proper cool. I, I really wish they did a long distance UK route, like London to Scotland, all 400 miles of it on the East Coast Main Line. That would be, a, think of all the timetables they would have to do. Like, they would actually have to do an insane amount of timetabling for it. Oh, I didn't know that train ran along this line. I've only seen 465s when I've been driving this, driving this line. So red signals sometimes... Are, oh, one negative thing as well. They've removed the save feature. You used to be able to save mid-game. That's been removed.
I feel like the save feature is a bit annoying that they removed, but it was a bit buggy in Train to World 2, so that's probably the reason why they removed it. to platform number two at Dartford where we will end this service. And then BAM! So that is the Grayson to Dartford section of the recently updated Southeastern High Speed. Pretty simple. Uh, it's a couple of stops, it looks kind of nice. Nice little 15 minute journey. And then you end up here. In Dartford. Be cool if it went further, but... We got this far, so that's good enough for me. Let's see how we got then. Okay, we sped a little bit out towards the end, but other than that, gold, medal, and we level up a bunch, because level sync up from train to mod 2.